Good evening. Welcome to a new TV lesson, a new topic. Uh, do you want to discover what the topic of our lesson is? Then listen to the whole story, please. Listen, dear, to what happens to me every day. And be ready to have your say. Get a pen and follow me straight away. To the door of my house, I start my way to find, as usual, parcels in array. Note down that I manage to keep away. Inside my house, I decide to stay. To my amazement, I hear someone say, open the door right away. I peep through the window like a spy to see two men on standby. Taste this product, they say. Don't have to pay. Try, we're sure you'll come to buy. Note down that I pretend to be shy. In front of TV, I decide to lie. To hear from X to A, channels say, buy this and that with no delay. Try it, you need it, don't get away. This is how, my dear, I give way. Note down how I become another prey. Listen to what happens to you every day. And be ready to have your say. Right. As you can see here, there is an image presented in the text. Can you find it? The image of a victim, maybe. The image of uh, someone trying to capture another person. Maybe it uh, can be compared to a prisoner running away or uh, someone trying to escape. And uh, we can say a policeman trying to catch uh, another man or maybe a criminal. But here we have another picture. So that can be compared to a hunter, someone trying to capture or trying to get um, someone in a trap. And here, then, we can speak of chase after a prey. Which words or expressions are relied on to present the image? As you can see, when we speak about poetry, we can say that there are sounds and meanings which are combined to get ideas and feelings. So the meanings or the words that are relied on here to express this idea of the chase can be um, found or expressed through some, exp uh, some sentences, some phrases, or some words, like parcels in array on the one side, the side of the one who tries to capture the other person. We can speak about parcels in array. We can speak on men on standby. And the fact that they say, don't get away, and it looks like an order here and not only someone who is trying to um, save a person. On the other side, we can find to keep away and peep like a spy. And someone, sometimes when we peep like a spy, which means we try to see someone without being noticed. And as a result is I give way, which means to surrender, and we have to become another prey and what you have to do now is to try to match each expression with the right definition. Right? And when you have an exercise like this, pay attention. You are not obliged to start with the first one, because if you find yourself unable to do the first, to find the right expression that goes or matches with the first definition, then you might, be, um, find, you might find difficulty to continue the exercise. And you might think that it's very difficult so try to the anyone that you find that it's easy and you are sure of, and then you have a, a smaller list for the other explanations or for the other, for the other definitions. And here, for example, I think that I'm sure of the word give away because I think that to give away, which means to let oneself be overcome, or uh, for example, I can say, I give away to despair. So to give away, or when I say I give away, which means I surrender or I um, uh, finally 
I, the, when I speak about the victim here or the person who is uh, captured and uh, ends by uh, giving away. And for the second one, for example, is parcels in array. And the right definition here is when someone is ready for action. Example, the troops. When we speak about the troops and we say that they are in array, which means they are ready to attack. For the following one, when you say men on standby, and this is also compared to what happens in a battle order when uh, the troops are ready to attack also in a battle. And when I say don't get away, which means don't escape. And finally, to keep away, which means not to go near somebody or something. And this is what I said when I spoke in the poem, that I tried to keep away from the parcels and, for example, from these parcels or from these adverts. Now, what can you find behind these adverts or what, we, um, what are compared here to traps? Um, what do they cover inside or which world do they hide? As you can see, the parcels or the different adverts that you can find here can be presented to advertise, can be in different ways, can be presented in different ways. For example, you can find parcels in front of the door. You can find the men that he spoke about here and who uh, try to convince you or persuade you to buy a certain product. And these are called by some people market searchers. And you can find also um, games or uh, uh, different ways to um, try to convince people to consume the maximum, like bonus, getting a bonus for the fact that you consume more, or like, um, for example, when you get, um, you buy more uh, products and you can get also a reward. So all these ways or all these traps as are uh, called here, are, are mentioned here, are ways also to um, convince people to buy the maximum of product or to consume. Now, we are going to try to discover the first word from this world that's covered, and which is money. When I speak of money, there are many words related to it. Money means to earn money as a verb, to earn money, or we can speak of a budget or the fact of planning an amount of money to keep an amount of money for a specific to spend in a specific period, like we can speak about a weekly budget. To save money, many people try to save money to buy a specific thing. For example, to buy a house or anything they'd like to plan for, to buy in the future, in their lives. And on the other side, we can speak about consuming, to consume something. We consume a product and when we consume these products we, can, we become clients, customers, but sometimes we waste money which means we spend too much money, maybe more than necessary, and as a result we have to get credits. And finally we become in debt. Now, we are going to focus on the word consume, and this is the second word we are going to rely on, and the second word that exists behind this world of adverts. And when I say uh, consume, you can find many other words, or money, you can find many other words related to it. What you have to do is just try to write them and check that you wrote them in the, right, in the correct way, or check the spelling and the pronunciation in a dictionary. Because a dictionary is very useful when we, when we learn English. We always have to refer to it. A dictionary can give you definition of words, can give you different um, definitions, because you have to choose sometimes the right definition the right, that um, matches with the context that you are learning. And also a dictionary can uh, provide you with the right uh, uh, the right meaning, the right pronunciation, and also the derivatives related to the word. For example, when I say consume, let's go back to the word consume. We can add 
a suffix, which is er, to get another word, and from consume, which is a verb, it changes into a noun of a person, or we can get consumerism by adding another suffix, which is, that is the ism, and to get different derivations. Let's enter the world of a dictionary and just check the meanings, the different meanings and the different derivatives of the words consume. Consume as a verb, for example, has different meanings as you can see here. For the first one, to use something up or to consume resources, time, stores, etc. Example, he consumed his fortune, spent the money wastefully. A second meaning here, to destroy uh, somebody or something by fire, for example. Uh, the fire quickly consumed the wooden hut. And the figurative meaning, as you can see here, is provided also to be consumed, i.e., or which means filled with envy, hatred, and greed. So consume can not only be related to something that physical thing that we, uh, we eat or drink or consume in general, but it can have a figurative meaning, such as envy and hatred. The formal meaning is also provided, which means to eat or, to eat or drink something. Now, the first derivation that you can get is consumer, and it is a noun. As you can see, we have the pronunciation of this word, and the meaning is a person or thing that consumes. And as you find here, consumer, so now we start the definition with a person. Whereas for the other one, when we say consume, we start with a verb. Economics, a person or organization that uses a commodity or service, and in ecology, an organism, usually an animal or that feeds on plants or other animals. To consumerize, this is also another verb, but it has a different meaning, which means to make goods, and as you can see, it's definition of a verb, to make goods or product suitable or available for mass consumption and to encourage or foster the widespread consumption of good or product. And also, especially in British, to consumerize is written with S. And this is one of the other things that the, the uh, details that the dictionary uh, can help us find. Consumption, and this is noun, the act or process of using up something. A progressive wasting of body tissue, and the third meaning, pulmonary tuberculosis, no longer in technical use. As you can see, this is related to a medical dictionary, and these definitions are taken from medical dictionary, which means we have different dictionaries used, dif used in different times or moments and different uh, fields. Consumerism in general is a modern movement for the protection of the consumer against useless, inferior, or dangerous products, misleading advertising, unfair prices and set pricing, etc. And we can speak of consumerism as the concept that a never expanding consumption of goods is advantageous to the economy. So we view here consumerism from another side, which means as something beneficial, something helpful and good for the economy from the positive side. And the third point is that the fact consumerism is seen as the fact or practice of an increasing consumption of goods. And here we speak about a critic of American consumerism, so it can be seen also from a negative side. We can also rely on the sources. A thesaurus um, can provide the different um, synonyms to a word. For example, here, consumer, uh, the synonym can be customer or uh, end user, purchaser, and we can find antonyms, and of course, this is really helpful. And consumer credit means someone, a credit, for a, let's read the definition. Credit granted to a consumer permitting to use or ownership of goods or services during a term of payment. So it's credit that you can get to help you consume something or to help you buy a product. Now, what you have to do is to fill in the blanks with the right words from the list below, and the words are related to the, all the derivations that we can get from the word consume. The words are consumerism, consumerize, consumer, consumption, 
and consumes. During the days of Christmas, the average United Kingdom family doubles its energy due to all the extra cooking, heating, and TV use. Now, if we speak about doubles its energy, and we have here the possessive, normally we can think of a noun. So, what about energy? We, we speak of energy here. Energy, did you find the word? Right, energy consumption. Good. Now, for the second sentence, the number of people visiting the Citizens Advice Bureau with debt problems has risen by three quarters in the last seven years. We've just seen the definition of this expression and we spoke about debt. Do you remember? Yeah, we spoke about consumer debt. Our purpose is to computers by making them cheaper. And if you remember, when we spoke about consumerize, we spoke of uh, trying to get this product but are affordable for many students. So here we can say our purpose is to consumerize computers by making them cheaper. The car, a lot of fuels, a fuel, and here we have the noun, the car, and what we need, what's missing is the verb. So the car consumes a lot of fuel. And here, as you can see, we have the S with a simple present, which means it matches grammatically and for the meaning also. Causes the wasteful use of energy and material. And of course, the last word is, it's not because it's the last word, but we have to check that it's true. And consumerism causes, it's given his provided as a noun, and causes is a verb that refers to this noun. And of course, this is true. Right. I think that you can't start keeping, start keeping quiet when you look at this beauty. But I'd like you to express your feelings and I'd like you to express your opinion and try to describe the beauty of this nature. Just focus on the bays and cliffs, the rivers and the trees and the creeks that lie side by side in harmony to create this world of nature and this incredible world of beauty as if they were created just for the service of humanity. But what service? This service which, which um, changed this world from a real world to an illusion. Now, look at the following picture. Here comes another world, the underworld, the underwater world, with its beauty and its crazy colors. You think for a while that they are going to um, live for the eternity, and no one can uh, touch this beauty. But unfortunately, if you visit some of the markets, uh, you are going to find another story. Uh, for example, there are huge nets which are used to capture the maximum of fish, maximum amount of fish to be bought in these markets. But the problem especially lies in the methods used to capture this fish. For example, the fish uh, bombs that are used to kill the fish and becomes easy to just to gather. But unfortunately, um, you can uh, hear and it's uh, sure that there, are, uh, there is a big amount of fish that, just, that is just killed to lie deep in the sea. About 90% of the fish that is uh, killed by the uh, blast that is spent by these bombs are, are um, kept in the deep of the oceans and only 10% are used or consumed. Now also, when you speak about, here's also the, uh, another picture of the world of uh, the fish, but um, it just reminds me of the sharks. It's not because these fish are sharks now, but uh, the, if we speak of the sharks, which means a big uh, fish, and uh, they are just got to, to be served in some uh, um, restaurants as a traditional dish and they are captured for their fins. And here we have in this fish, for example, the example, here is just the part that is the fin. Now also, when I speak about the sunrise and sunset, they've been written about in so many poems just to show their beauty. But now the word sun becomes connected to the word danger, and the connotation that's, uh, uh, that is always linked to it is uh, real danger, disease, 
and disaster even because nowadays we speak about uh, the, the ozone depletion and uh, it dangerous, its dangerous effects. And this is of course because of the pollution caused by humanity and by consumerism. Now, if we spoke in, from these two sides, do we mean that consumerism, consumerism uh, equals comfort, another world, um, happiness, and then we can speak of constructing or construction or building? Or does it mean, as you can see here in this picture, uh, the fact of cutting, destroying, and even not noticing that we are destroying this nature and we just look at this man, he's just looking at the nature and as if he's uh, the powerful man who is uh, trying to control everything and is dominating everything. But then his, this world uh, this world of consumerism becomes a real destruction. And we can think from different other sides. For example, look at these cars. Most of them are still useful and they are just thrown away because they become old and a new term appears which is new with new words like it's the best, it's the fastest and also it's the most comfortable. And look at the person, the effect of consumerism on humanity, on people and the social effects as if begging just because he's got so many credits because he bought cars and many other products without even thinking of how to uh, be able to pay them later. Huge piles of um, garbage thrown everywhere on earth and because of course of overconsumption of these products. And finally, look at the danger we cause and the birds and many other animals which are on the verge of extinction and because of the pollution, because of oil spill and because of uh, the consumption of uh, overconsumption of uh, resources. So, can we say that consumerism means construction? Is it destruction? Or maybe we can speak of it's being a construction of destruction, or it is the beginning of destruction or the damage that we can cause to the earth. Or maybe also we can speak of the destruction of the construction or the fact that we are destroying what our ancestors built before for many, so many years or tried to save for so many years. Now, what about your attitude? I asked you in the beginning, in the poem, to listen to the story and then to have your say, to be ready to have your say. And here we, ha we hear the example of four people who try to express themselves and to keep their opinion. The first one, Lisa, but before we read, let me tell you that you have to, do, to put two stars if the attitude is positive and only one star if the attitude towards consumerism is negative. For the first one, no person has the right to decide for others what goods are necessary for a living and which aren't or that luxuries are necessarily wasteful. And here, of course, we can say that Lisa urges people to be free to consume whatever they like and no one can decide for them if they can buy a product or not buy it. And thus we have two stars, which means it's a positive attitude. John says, you work in a job you hate, to buy stuff that you don't need, to impress people that you don't like. So here, what you have to do is to work extra hours to buy more things and to satisfy manufacturers or people who try to advertise their products. And then this is a negative attitude as you can see here. For the president of the World Watch Institute, Christopher Flavin thinks that rising consumption has helped meet basic needs and create jobs. And of course, since he is the president of World's World Watch Institute, he tries here to show consumerism from the positive side and he urges people to consume because he thinks that this helps meet basic needs, needs and create jobs. But whether it's true or false, of course, this is have to be discussed. And here we can see that it's presented in the positive side. 
37% of species could become extinct due to climate change, which is very directly related to consumption. And as, an ex as examples, we can speak of elephants, which were um, cut, which are slaughtered just for their uh, task. Or we can speak of tigers, which are captured also for their fur. And thus, it is presented from the negative side. Now look at the following titles. The first one, the, I've got these titles from different magazines which dealt with this problem, the problem of consumerism, and this is one of these magazines. My son isn't walking yet, but has three pairs of boots. I am in debt, but I still blew 400 pounds in two hours, coping with being broke. Broke or we don't have money anymore, which means maybe to be in debt. We are addicted to shopping and we don't care. What happens if we simply can't afford it? What you have to do is to choose a title and a subtitle for the following text. Now, look at the title is again. And let's move to the text. When I go shopping, I get a rash of adrenaline. Nothing beats it. I suppose I should be saving for a house and car. But shopping is much more fun. I spend at least half my wages on clothes, bags, I've got about 80 so far, and accessories. I've got loads of credit cards and store cards and try to get new ones when I'm running out of credit. Fortunately, I don't work near any shops or I'd be heavily in debt. But if I walk past a clothes shop, I can't resist going in. I love coming home with 12 carrier bags. Even if I don't have much time, I can still rack up a huge bill. I spent 400 pounds in a couple of hours the other day. I love buying expensive makeups, um, makeup scarves and jewelry. If I see a jumper I really like, I might buy it in three colors. I think this is partly because as a student, I had to be very careful with money. Once I started earning, I went a bit mad. I often discover something in my wardrobe with the label still on that I bought months ago and have totally forgotten about. I drive my husband Roger to distraction. He's a saver and thinks I frit away money. I don't feel guilty and I don't want to be cured. Let's go back to the titles. Now I'd like you to choose a title and a subtitle. For the title we can speak of something general like um, this one. We are addicted to shopping and we don't care. And then we think that they are, they, this is an example. This text is just one example of many people who spoke about their addiction. And as a subtitle, we have to think of something more related to the text. For example, the sentence here that's mentioned in the text. We always, or most of the time, find subtitles that are directly related to the text or even taken uh, as a sentence taken from the text itself to focus on it. Like, I am in debt, but I still blew 400 pounds in two hours. Well, I'd like you to read the text again and to find details in the text that explain how consumerism is considered as destructive and destructive at the same time. When I say destructive, I mean enjoyable, and by destructive, I mean uh, destroy, the verb from the verb to destroy or damage. Now, if you look at the text, you find the first detail, which is, when I go shopping, I get a rush of adrenaline, nothing beats it. And when I say uh, what, I, what she means by this sentence, that she has a kind of a desire for shopping, and that she's really satisfied, she feels satisfied when the goes shopping. Now this means, uh, this shows uh, consumerism as destructive. For the second one, for the second word, the second sign, destructive, which means when from the negative side, she says, I got loads of credit cards and store cards and try to get new ones when I'm running out of credit. And then we can have the following two answers. I get a rush of adrenaline, nothing beats it for 
the first one, the first word that is destructive. And as a second answer, we can say, I've got loads of credit cards and store cards and try to get new ones when I'm running out of credit. Now look at the following question. Correct the following four statements with details from the text. The first statement, Gemma has been a shopping addict since she was a child. Now, was she an addict since she was a child, really? In the text, she spoke about the period when she was a student. And maybe you remember that she said, as a student, I had to be very careful with money. Once I started earning, I went a bit mad. Notice that when we say correct four statements, you have to write the sentence and copy the sentence since it is a detail in the text. And here we are asked to write a detail from the text, which means I don't have to paraphrase the sentence or use my own words, but I just write it um, as it is, which means I just copy the sentence. And thus, I get the following answer. As a student, I had to be very careful with money. Once I started earning, I went a bit mad. So notice that I didn't change any uh, detail, any word. I don't have to express it myself. The second false statement is, Gemma feels regretful because she spent so much money on shopping. Now I'm going to focus on the word feels regretful, which means I think that this is the false part and I have to go back to the text and try to show the, to see, to find a detail which proves the opposite, which means, which proves that she wasn't really feel uh, regretful. She didn't feel regretful. Now, look at this part. She says, I don't feel guilty and I don't want to be cured. And of course, this is a proof that the statement is false. Okay, I don't feel guilty and I don't want to be cured. Find in the text an idiomatic expression that means almost to a state of madness. Now, which idiomatic expression? When I say idiomatic expression, let me explain it first. When I say idiomatic expression, which means uh, an expression which doesn't convey the meaning of the words that, uh, make, uh, that uh, constitute this, uh, this sentence or this expression. For example, uh, when I say, give me a hand. I don't mean to just give me your hand, but it means uh, to help someone. Now, when we go back to the text, focus on the last part here. She says, Gemma says, I drive my husband Roger to destruction. Drive to destruction means almost to a state of madness. So this is the right answer. And I asked also, I'd, I'd like you to find in the text a phrasal verb. And what I mean by phrasal verb, in English, verbs often combine with prepositions, example, into, from, of, out of, or adverbs, example, away, back, up, or out of position, adverbs of position or direction. Some combinations have meanings which are not easy to understand from those of the individual words. Those combinations are called phrasal verbs. Examples. The examples that the, the example that we have, for example, um, give away or um, get away as the examples that I wrote in the poem earlier I mentioned. There are many examples of phrasal verbs when I spoke about uh, I keep away, I get away, and uh, uh, give way, for example. Now, how to find phrasal verbs in the dictionary? First, it is important to be able to tell whether go over or work out, run on, etc. are phrasal verbs or not. Look at this sentence. The waiter went over to a cupboard and took some glasses out. What I have to focus on are went over and took something out. Here, went over and took something out are not phrasal verbs because they express ordinary movement of the verb and ordinary di direction. 
These meanings can be referred to in the numbered section of the entries for go or over or take and out, which means we just go, we have we just to focus on the word go to find the meaning of uh, this expression. But suppose you meet this sentence, the following sentence, do you mind going over my maths homework? As you can say, we don't mean go by going over here movement as in the first sentence, but it expresses something different. Here, going over obviously has nothing to do with movement. It is a phrasal verb and has a special meaning of its own. Now, I think, I uh, hopefully uh, think that uh, you are going to find the right answer. Now, look at the text again. In the end of the text, he says, he is a saver, which means her husband. He's a saver and thinks I fritter away money. And fritter away money is a phrasal verb, which means waste, especially one's time or money foolishly on small useless things. Right. Now, we are going to do something different. Uh, you remember when we were young, I remember when we were young, we used to play a kind of a game, which means I say a word and, uh, for example, the members of the family of my friends or my friends uh, try to add something to this word or add another word, and then each time we have to repeat the sentence until we check who can say the whole sentence without making mistakes and by adding new words without and uh, not deleting. And we are going to take the same, um, th to do this uh, in a s approximately the same way, which means we are going to start with Gemma. And I'd like you, suppose you have two pupils, you can uh, play it with uh, a brother, a sister, or a friend. But what you have to do is each time you have to add a part I'm not going to say it's just add a word, but add a part of the sentence in a way that we have each time we can move from a word to a simple sentence and more to more developed or complex sentence. But you don't have the right to delete, to delete any word that's added previously by your friend. So, for example, A here added this part. Gemma loves shopping. And of course, this is correct sentence. We have a subject, a verb, and another part here, which is shopping. Now, for B, what he has to do, of course, is to add another part without making a mistake, which means uh, we have to think of a coherent sentence and correct sentence. And B adds Gemma, a secretary, a detail about Gemma, loves shopping. And of course, this is accepted because the, word, the part secretary is added in the right place and between two commas, which means to add a detail about Gemma that is not really necessary, but you can avoid it. A, Gemma, a 22-year-old secretary, he added a compound adjective, and of course, the article A has to be before, have to be uh, written or kept before the compound adjective, and compound adjective comes just before the word secretary, and this is true, and that's perfect. So, Gemma, a 22-year-old secretary loves shopping. As you can see, A prefers to add another part, which means uh, this one. And he says, Gemma, a 22-year-old secretary from Epson loves shopping, and from Epson is added in the correct place. Gemma, we get another sentence, a longer sentence.